My 27M girlfriend's 24F smelled so bad, it led me to break up with her but she's not acknowledging the fact that we're broken up. I'm on the edge and irritated. We were together for two years. My ex-girlfriend recently started using no waste deodorant, maybe two months ago. I understand that she cares about the environment, but that shit reeks. It smells like fucking garlic and it doesn't even seem to work. When I asked her if she could switch back, we got into a huge argument about it and it ended up making things worse. I ended up breaking off the relationship two days ago at least I tried to. We sat down, I talked and at the end I said that I didn't think it was going to work and that I could help her find an apartment, and then she said okay and that we would talk when she gets back from work, but we never did. I was thinking okay, maybe she got the memo, but she keeps using the deodorant. She lives in my house, moved in right before quarantine, and the smell didn't used to be there because she used secret, which honestly made her smell good. I don't think this is going to work out, and I want to talk to her about her plans on moving out, because I want the constant smell of garlic and sweat gone. My mom tried to use it a couple years ago and I can confirm you are not being dramatic. It smells so bad it makes your head hurt. It's apparently terrible with most people's body chemistry. Bruh yes. My head literally aches, that's why I can't sleep in my room. Damn bro that really stinks. It does. Just ask her if she needs help finding an apartment. Start sleeping in a separate room if it's possible. I currently sleep on my couch, a few weeks now. My back is killing me, but it doesn't smell as bad out here than in the bedroom. Suggested talking points. 1. We are broken up. 2. You need to start making plans to move out. 3. No we are not going to talk about this some more. 4. Please do not make me formally evict you. It's just like in the Friends episode. I think you will have to say it clearly that we are over and also please don't use that deodorant inside the house because it gives me headaches. Something like that. But be thorough, say it clearly. The smell lingers skeptical, but thanks. I am really upset, my mom said my older brother molesting me was just sexual exploration. Just recently a repressed memory for me came to the surface and it's been difficult to think about. I was 7 to 9 and my brother was either 10 to 12. I'm basing this off the bedroom the vivid memory takes place, he tricked me and told me there was a cool view outside his bedroom window when you lay on the floor. Everybody else was downstairs and it was just us in his room. Him and I lay down on the floor and he slipped his finger into my underwear and put it into my vagina. He said I want to see what it feels like and discomfort and confusion took over. Now, everything after that is a blur. Growing up my brother was very emotionally abusive and lacked empathy. He stole and would compulsively lie. He physically abused our dog, and also began watching porn at age 9 according to my parents. I really wish my brother was innocent and didn't know what he was doing, but I have a gut feeling he did considering the way he is. I just opened up about this experience to my mom and she responded very nonchalantly saying he was just experimenting and you shouldn't think anything of it she said it's very normal for siblings to experiment sexually. I just feel very hurt because it seems like more than that. This situation does does not seem normal in the slightest and I feel very uncomfortable about it. Too long didn't read, my brother molested me at a young age, but my mom said it's normal sexual exploration. Was your mother explored sexually by her siblings? Cause this is in no way shape or form normal. Sorry this happened but no absolutely not normal. Except for this subreddit I have never heard of siblings experimenting. What is your mom talking about? It happens with much younger kids, kindergarten age, that are close in age, though more often with friends. It isn't actually sexual, it is just curiosity about how bodies look. That's a mutual thing. This here isn't, it is abusive. Sexual, abuse between siblings is something that people like to ignore, but unfortunately it isn't that rare. No 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 no. What your brother did to you is not normal. Exclamation mark. Please get yourself professional help. This is way above this subreddit's pay grade. It sounds like your mom is in denial. It makes sense that you're upset. I'm sorry that this happened to you, and I'm sorry that your mom is too much of a coward baby to face reality. 
I, M31, accidentally got a woman, F25, pregnant a few years ago. Now an accidental family, I love them all but I am just so miserable. Using a throwaway because I suspect I might get some hate for this, but I just have no one that I can talk to about this and desperately need some advice as I am sure someone else must have been in my position before. I should also say I have written out this story a few times already and worried that it's way too long, so I am just going to try keep it simple. First up, I have super horrible depression. I am constantly wanting to take my own life, it's the fucking worst. I used to deal with my depression by embracing a carefree, independent, selfish sex, drugs and rock and roll lifestyle until eventually one girl, then 21, turned up on my, then 27, doorstep about 5 weeks after meeting her, holding a positive pregnancy test. I didn't want the child, and advised it wasn't great to have a baby with a complete stranger, especially since she was so young and I was at a very unstable stage in my life. She vetoed this and opted to have the baby. I didn't want to have to spend 16 years of my life giving half of my money to some random woman and our child, nor did I want to be remembered as being the useless dad who wasn't involved, or even just be responsible for any difficulties that child had growing up because I had killed myself. So I offered my full support, we ended up dating properly and were in a relationship by the time our daughter was born. Fast forward a year through 50% good times 50% arguing, mostly over parenting, we have very different opinions due to our own upbringings, and we decide to have another child, mostly so that our daughter has a sibling with a close age so that it would pay off in the long run. Fast forward another two years and here we are. I am now engaged to my baby mama and I think she is absolutely brilliant, she's gorgeous, hilarious and a great mum, but we still have so many clashes because of how different we are. I love my kids too, but they make my life so difficult and I have basically had to give up all hope of progressing in my career because of them. I am completely depressed and miserable. I have even built a secret gallows for myself and got the hangman's noose all ready for when it gets too much. I do miss my independence and living on my own slash not having to speak to people when I'm not working. I miss being able to focus on my own mental health whereas now I have to be in dad mode 100% of the time, and support my fiance when she is tired or ill, but there is zero support for me, I see myself as the safety net, although everyone only just focuses on my partner and what she's doing and how she's raising two kids even though I am with them more often than she is. I don't know what to do. I never wanted to be here, but I'm here. Being here makes me miserable, not being here would let my whole family down. Too long didn't read, got a random younger woman pregnant, got into long term relationship, had a second child, my mental health is deteriorating badly and now I don't know if I can handle being a part of this family but the thought of leaving would be horrible and the only third option just seems to be suicide. Edit, I want to say thank you to everyone for all the comments. I will read through them properly when I have time but I appreciate people taking the time to help. But I want to clarify a few things too, 1, I have tried therapy, it wasn't helpful and I lost my place because I missed a call, and I am actively and desperately trying to get help with other services. I cannot afford private therapy, only NHS. Who? Contraception was involved. But sometimes these things still happen, the details aren't important to this post but the point is neither of us thought there was much chance of a baby. 3. I am on medication, and have tried several but with only bad side effects, mirtazepine, sertraline, citralopam, fluoxetine, amitriptyline and trazodone. The trazodone helps me sleep but I am still miserable AF. 4. Regarding the messages that I a bad person for not appreciating how lucky I am to have a fiancé and two kids, I know, but that's all the more reason why it's impossible for me to talk about being depressed because I feel guilty about the fact that I should be enjoying this life. Edit 2. Just because I am seeing a lot of comments and messages saying should have had a vasectomy or should have worn a condom, 
please, I am asking for help about my current situation. I wasn't going to have a vasectomy in my 20s, I don't think they even let you do that on the NHS. Because I wanted to have kids, I just wanted to sort out my career, be older and be in a stable relationship first. Also, I am tired of the condom comments over the past 4 years, she told me last minute she had a latex allergy and rejected my condom, but offered a latex free one. As it evidently turns out, these are much less effective and prone to splits. If you can find a man who would, while naked on top of a naked girl, stop the whole thing to sit there and start googling about the effectiveness of this brand of condoms, I will give you £10. Sorry but where a condom comments are neither new nor helpful to me right now. Honestly, it sounds like your depression and misery is completely independent from your family, seeing that you had it before, but now you have it in your head that it's because of them. Frankly, you probably would be feeling that way regardless, and if you ended up in a different situation then you would probably be blaming the people there too. Does that mean that your relationship is a good and healthy and that you should marry right away? Of course not, but I don't you are actually in the position to really decide something like that? one way or another. Like everyone else says, you need to be focusing on your mental health and figuring out exactly what you need there. Clearly, what you are doing isn't working and you need a new approach. Do you have a therapist or doctor working with you? Do you need to find a new one? Is there by chance something else going on, on a psychological level that has been left untreated and triggering the depression? Is there a hormone imbalance of some of some kind or an extreme victim deficiency? Have you ever been checked? Or maybe there is something else extremely traumatic that happened in your or past there you simply haven't been able to work through yet. There is a lot of options, and keep in mind antidepressives may not be the answer here. That doesn't mean that there isn't another one. Be kind to yourself, honestly, I think you have done well considering. You made a life and a family out of being rounded up as a careless mistake. You have pushed through on what you believe is right, regardless of how difficult it was starting out. But now, you need to start putting the time and effort into being the best for yourself so that you can actually make the best long-term decision for your relationship and family. Take care. I feel like people here aren't really addressing the fact that you are having suicidal ideation and have a suicide plan ready. You need to see your doctor immediately and talk to them about that so that you can get the help you need. Putting on your own oxygen mask first is the principle here. Good luck. Stupid question. But does your fiancé slash wife know this? So try to work out something where you each, both of you, can go off for a few days a month to be carefree meaning you don't have anyone to care for, unless the other calls in a code red, and don't have anyone caring for you. Go off to the mountains camping with a J or two, maybe 12 I don't know your life. But try to sit down and plan opportunities for the both of you to live sporade short escapes. Having those little jaunts away can make all the difference. Second Second what do you do for a living? What was the previous occupation? If you love D, the rock and roll lifestyle see about working in slash for a club or bar. It might give you a little bit of the old life without completely letting it go. And when your kids are older, say middle school age, maybe go on to once or twice a year with bands or as a stage hand, whatever you feel dude. Right now it sounds like you've surrendered your life for your family, try building a life with your family. But your life, not the one you're forced into. And the noose, life will kill you eventually. Why cut your ticket to ride short? Stick out till the end of the show if you can, there's only the one viewing. Don't know if that's of any value to you but best of luck. I'm sorry you're suffering but strive for the impossible because unless we do we'll never reach the stars.